Hi everyone, I'm Sostein. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be putting on my 1890s puffed sleeve outfit. So this puffed sleeve outfit is inspired by the one from Anne of Green Gables. If you recall, Anne actually asked Marilla, her adoptive mother, for a puffed sleeve outfit. And she has always dreamt of having puffed sleeves. She is so desperate for these puffed sleeves. And Marilla says no. They are so expensive and frivolous, and after having made these, I'm kind of on Team Marilla on this one. Puff sleeves eat up so much fabric for, like, no reason other than to go around with fabulous puffed sleeves. And I'm not even kidding, each sleeve of this jacket took me an extra yard of fabric. So two yards of fabric just for the sleeves, which if you do the math, on a $30 per yard fabric, that means that the sleeves alone cost $60. They are frivolous and they are useless, but they are so wonderful and hashtag worth it. So I can totally see Marilla's side, but I also agree with Anne that, you know, fashion is not always about doing what's most practical financially or otherwise. So why not just have puff sleeves? So. In any case, if you are curious about the making of this outfit, I will go into it a little bit on my channel, but I also have a blog post complete with a ton of pictures on how I made this, so feel free to go there. It's linked below. It's on my blog. My blog is sosteen.com, so it's pretty easy to get to, and you can take a look. But meanwhile, let's get started. So I start with my hair. I apologize for cutting my hair out of the shot. However, trying to film again with a child in the house is honestly futile. It's just never going to happen. Malcolm's favorite thing is to knock my tripod over. Particularly likes it when the um, tripod hits ground and then it makes it large, large clashing sound and he goes, uh oh. So that's my life. So I'm sorry, you, this is what you're going to get. So I start with these three plastic hair pieces. I am aware that in the 1890s they would actually use their own hair for these puffs, but you know, I I don't. I bought these um, on LBCC, Little Bits Historical. I have linked them below so you can check out their store. They sell so many wonderful things like the right kind of makeup and everything if you want historically accurate makeup. You'll notice I am wearing makeup, but not, mine is not historically accurate. Mine is just Chanel. and. Uh, a little bit of lip sense for the lips because I believe in dyeing my lips instead of actually putting lipstick on, which smudges everywhere when you're wearing a mask. So I do that. After I get these three hair pieces in a loop, I put it on my head and then I just wrap my hair around it bit by bit. I start with the front and I just kind of flatten it out into a thin sheet and then just wrap it. And then I do that along the sides and then the back. My hair actually is about two inches above my hip. I usually don't have my hair this long, but with Corona the way it is, I'm just afraid to go to a hairdresser. Um, it's about to my hip. It's a little bit on the long side for this era. I would say that if you're trying to go as easy as possible, having about shoulder length is probably the easiest. So then I put it in the back. I use the extra length to make a bun on top. At the same time, that bun is still not floofy enough, so I bought a fake hair bun on eBay, and it's made of polyester, and it's just, it's cheap, but it really does the job of making myself look like I have a big bun on top. So that's what I do. Um, one disclosure, this is more like Gibson girl hair. We're talking like 1900s, 1899, 1900. And um, this is clearly more of an early 1890s outfit, like 1894. So you're, you might be like, wait, why are you doing the wrong hair? And the answer is because I like it. I really, I really, really like that Gibson girl hair look and very few people give you crap about it. So I'm not historically ac accurate. I am historically adequate at best. So on top of all that, I will be putting on my little boater hat. My boater hat is from Miss Patina. Um, you can look at look at it below I've linked it it's a fabulous hat I bought a slightly larger size than what I would normally wear so that it would fit on top of my big hair and I often just pin it using a hat pin so highly recommended now let's talk about putting on the actual outfit I am I for one always put my shoes on before I get into it just because I suck at bending with a corset on 
I am wearing the wrong type of shift heads up. I am actually wearing a Regency shift, but I don't own an 1890s shift, so you'll have to forgive me. Um, I just don't care enough about shifts. I really don't. I'm, I'm terrible about underwear. As long as it looks good, I usually don't bother with shifts and petticoats being the right era. Um, that being said, I do care about the corset being the right era. My corset is from Red Threaded. This is the Rosina Custom Corset. And mine is in this beautiful cream silk that I absolutely love. It's so beautifully corded and it's just wonderful to wear. It really gives me that 1890 shape, which is slightly different from an 1880s as well as a 1900 S-Bend corset. So it's not an S-Bend. It really does shape your body in that very distinct 1890s way. So now after the corset, I put on my bump pad. My bum pad is from the Boudoir Key there on Etsy. I usually don't tie it exactly at the waist, I tie it a little bit below. And you'll notice that most of my garments, other than my actual skirt and overskirt, actually are sit slightly below the waist. And I do that because I want my waist to be as close to small as possible. And the more fabric I have gathered at the waist, the more fabric I have gathered at the waist. And the bigger my waist looks. So actually my petticoat will sit just a few inches, like an inch and a half below my waistline. And um, this also helps pad out my my hips because that uh, bit of extra fabric will be actually at my hips instead of at my waist. Now, after this, I put on my blouse. My blouse is an 1890s sort of Gibson era-esque blouse from historical Emporium. It is purchased. It is not vintage. It is not made by me. I, as I said, I, there are certain pieces I just don't care enough to make. So I actually bought this one. Um, I highly recommend them. They have lots of different shapes and you can look at the different shapes to figure out which one would work best for whichever era you're doing. Um, I do recommend that afterwards you may have to move the button at the neck. Um, mine was way too tight and I actually ended up nearly choking myself getting into it. And I was actually, it was like, oh my God, what if it stops blood flow to my brain? And I actually kind of worried about it. So um, I highly recommend moving that button. It's really, really easy. It takes about three minutes, but about five hours of procrastination. So. After the blouse, I went ahead and put on my actual skirt. My skirt is made out of the truly Victorian 1890s walking skirt pattern. It is such a good pattern. I love the shape of this skirt. Mine is made out of a silk duchesse satin from Mood, and it is such a wonderful orange. I love this dark burnt orange color. I then lined it using a cotton twill. My cotton twill is from Etsy. I buy it in 20 yard bolts. I will link that below as well. So the way that 1890s skirts flare out is the bottom couple of inches of the skirt either have some sort of horsehair or some sort of interfacing like tarlatan to stiffen the skirt so it doesn't want to collapse on itself. It actually stiffens itself out. I actually use iron on Pelon horsehair interfacing. It works so well and instead of historically accurate method of doing tiny pin pick prick stitches all the way around the hem and the top of the skirt so that it stays close to it, it literally just stay is glued on using this artificial iron on glue that is completely modern and not historically accurate but it's fast and it works and on top of all that the glue itself is a stiffener so it actually makes this flare out even more i actually love the skirt i plan on using this skirt um with other 1890s outfits that i have not sewn yet i feel like just the skirt and the blouse alone would be totally a cool outfit but we've got more um, now on top of this skirt I will be wearing another skirt this is an over skirt this was made by the ageless pattern pattern and um, I the skirt I actually didn't change the pattern up all too much I just use it as is I did make the pleats a little bit larger and therefore more dramatic but um you know, it's just such a pretty pattern. I didn't really have to dress up skirt at all. The uh, the skirt is wool, also from Mood. Then on top of that, I put on the waistcoat. Now, just another heads up about 
the ageless pattern patterns they are like one size fit none so i highly recommend making a mock-up and changing it up i do talk about this more on my blog for those of you who are interested in doing this there is a lot of work that goes into making an ageless patterns fit you and your non victorian 37 bust 24 inch waist body but um, again, I gained weight while I was working on this waistcoat, so I actually put a split in the back and made a little handmade out eyelets so that I could lace myself into my waistcoat and make sure I fit. It is an old 18th century trick for the life of me. I actually don't know if they did this at all in the Victorian era, but you know what? It worked. I needed a waistcoat that fit and I got larger, so I am not going to sit around and not wear it, so there we go. My jacket is actually a waiter's jacket. It has that puffed sleeve. The puff sleeves don't actually puff out that much on their own, even though they are flat lined with a very stiff muslin. Um, I actually have little plastic hoops that I got from the boudoir key that are designed to be sewn into your into the jacket so that the jacket will just poof out on its own. And like you can see how much it poofs even without me like doing anything to it like there's no adjusting it just poofs out it's so wonderful i highly recommend hoops for your s sleeves if you'd like they're so light because they're just thin bits of plastic and they just they're about nine inches in diameter which is perfect for most sleeves so highly recommended now you're going to see me do something silly just for the sake of showing off this gorgeous watch I bought. I got this beautiful watch from uh, from Etsy. I'll link the store below. Highly, highly recommend it. It is an actual 1890s antique watch. Now, you'll see me. I am putting the chain into my top button, which is historically accurate, but then I have no place to put this pocket watch because I forgot to put in a pocket watch pocket. Don't be me, put in a pocket watch pocket. Um, I will absolutely be putting in a pocket for my next waistcoat, but a piece of jewelry I absolutely will be wearing with this is my little cameo. I got my cameo from Jovan Cameos while I was in Venice. They do have a website where they put most of their collection up. They have the most beautiful antique and modern cameos. By antique cameos, I mean cameos that are so beautiful and lovingly made that the artist actually signed their name into the cameo itself. It is just so cool how they did that. I actually hired them to make a cameo of my son for my mother-in-law as a present and their work is just gorgeous. I am, I know, I'm, I love shopping online, don't you? And finally, I put on my hat and there we go. I am in my outfit. Now, at the time of filming this, this was 99 degrees outside, which meant that I wasn't going to do a photo shot dressed head to toe in wool and live. So I just got a teacup and I am sitting here. I'm gonna sip on my tea and that'll be my photo shoot for this. Sorry, there's no exciting garden shots, but my garden is basically dead right now because it's 99 degrees anyway. So um, anyways, thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed watching me get ready in my 1890s outfit. And I hope you have some fun sewing adventures yourself. Stay safe, everyone.